So the interesting thing about this is if you'll notice, each one of these people has a very different sort of approach. <coughs> if you look at their Facebook pages, the posts, the style would be very different. One of the things I want everybody to know is that you have to find your own voice. So many agents say, well, Greg, is there a book of posts that I can copy? <laughs> And I found that just doesn't work. You've got to find your personality, your style, and say what works well for you, and let it come out. So what I'd like to do is open it up for questions. Now, I've been uh, tweeting here, asking for questions, and I'm not seeing any questions on Twitter. So uh, questions from the audience. Yes? Well, first of all, uh, I'd like to commend the entire group. Uh, great discussion. This is the first time I've been to a, uh, a social media a symposium, and well, as inspired, uh, new ideas and such great. Uh, what I would be interested in, maybe it falls into Roger's area, um, I do have a concept of how I'd like to move forward. The question is, there are technical aspects of how to bring this to life. So how do I approach that with the different mediums, the uh, you know, Facebook, Pinterest, uh, Twitter? How do I select and how do I formulate a process to move forward to make my concept come alive? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, and I get asked that question all the time. Um, I would obviously start on Facebook. I mean, like Jeremy said, 90% of all social happens on Facebook. And so I would definitely start on Facebook. So if you're not, if you don't have a personal <coughs> profile on Facebook, definitely start there. And I would probably build up your personal profile, connect with people from your youth, your high school, your college, your job, your work, anything like that. Um, I think that'd be a good place to start. All of this did not happen overnight for any of us at all. I mean, my first Facebook endeavor was watching my wife on Facebook over her shoulder going like, what are you doing? I mean, didn't you date that guy in high school? Like, what are you doing on there? You know? So, um, but actually, that, that's kind of how it started. So it got me interested in my wife. She's like, I'm going to do your business. I'm like, whoa, nice. Bob's heard me say this story many times, but it started with her. So I, we had no idea five or six years ago what to do. We didn't know what was the, we didn't know how like the art of social media down. We we're just being ourselves. We were on there. We we're open. We wanted to connect with people from high school or college or whatever it was, and we just jumped in. And then all of a sudden, there's a business page. And we're like, whoa, that's kind of cool. So we made a business page, and um, I would start there. And here in Orange County, there are so many resources like Saturday morning with Bob Watson, SMMOC, or on Monday mornings, SMMOC RE. That's a great place to get involved with people who are socially savvy and can definitely help you out. There's like Stacy Hartman, she's here in Orange County, she's a great Facebook expert. So that's a great place to start. I think the interesting thing and the encouraging thing here is that you can actually marry up your, you know, your passions, your interests, your, uh, you know, this brings into a into the picture a human aspect right. of the business that uh, I, I suppose I didn't know was possible, but I mean this really brings to mind uh, a multitude of aspects to the business, how it could become uh, fun and start lighting a fire. Yeah, it, a it's, a built in, like, uh, Robin, it's a built-in, like, it's a built-in CRM, basically is what Facebook is. Yeah. I mean, every morning, birthdays are on there. I mean, people from high school, their birthdays, like, who would never call them? Or and then save it on post-it. Never. <laughs> so what if it's their birthday? Hey, and you know what people do like video messages for people's birthdays, or just a little happy birthday and they tag them. Or there's a guy in Beverly Hills that puts a thing that Dom carried on, tags his business page. I mean, I'm sure we all know who we're talking about. So, there's so many different ways to do it and and to do it right. And one more little question here. Uh, so there are probably various levels of expertise you can acquire to become expert in the technical aspect so that your your concept or what it is you want to get across to people is heightened or the effectiveness is heightened by virtue of sharpening your technical aspects. I, I mean, I'm not a, a big Facebook user. I will become one. <laughs> but uh, there are a lot of tools in there. Some tools are tools in other uh, programs that can be used that can enhance your your message. So let me reinterpret that question for the panel, and, and maybe we we'll get each one to offer it. And 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 let me I'm going to ask that ask that question is this: 
where do you think you've learned the most about Facebook from classes you've attended or playing with Facebook? Uh, is that what I mean? So yes. Playing it. So, like five, six years ago, like we were saying, we didn't know what we were doing. We were just messing around and playing. So, so that's all we were doing. What about you, Mike? I'm thinking, believe. Yeah, I got on Facebook because my sister, one of my assistants, he was like 21 years old. Fucking hell, she said, Yeah, we got on Facebook. I'm like, I thought it was a MySpace thing. I'm like, Don't be a mystery agent, okay? That's where um, I'll, I teach sometimes um, agents and what I'll find and when I get on their page and will show me how they started it. Um, you need people to know what you do for a living and um, so your name, how to get a hold of you, your website, your phone number, like your work number, whatever info you're okay with them having, have it on there. Because the thing that I love about Facebook is how awesome is it? You can find so much out about one person just by going to their info page. And it's like when she said, artist engineer. Well, I researched my sellers, and if I knew, you know, if they were going to be an engineer, I'm pulling in all numbers. And that is all I'm talking about. So it's a really great way to find out every, like, what sports they like, you know, if you know, what sports they don't like, that kind of thing. I mean, I'm amazed at how many agents don't realize that friending a prospect gives you an incredible wealth of information about them. It's like the guidebook on how to work with them. And agents in them all pass. Yeah, I'm always know, shocked by that. I personally do have local agents on my page. A lot of people say don't do that because it's a waste of a friend. I actually want to, I want to know people's names and phone numbers. Like, I want to know people in the industry that in my marketplace that I'm working in so that they know me. And they have an offer from my property, they feel comfortable enough to approach me and say, Hey, Robin, I have an offer from your property because it's, it's a better relationship. And if one of my buyer's agents has an offer for me, their property, I can call them up and say, Hey, what's up? We're all Facebook. I'm, hey, we're going to go, you know, kind of do that, that little edge a little bit. Um, and I think vendors, anyone who is a vendor, you should have as many go to your lender page as possible. And you need to engage with them because if not, you're out of sight. Explain what it means to waste a friend. Waste a friend. Okay, so you have on your private page, you have a 5,000 max limit, okay? So I have a waiting list. And I don't want to waste a friend. So I just have to do this with some people to get some people back on. And I don't want to waste a friend on someone that isn't going to benefit me in some way. Either I, they're my family or they're going to... Like they're a vendor I work with and engage with me and they're gonna help my clients or they're another agent that might refer me business or something like that. Yes. Yeah, the last time I got those was on their birthday a year ago and it wasn't then, it was everyone else. Yeah. I delete a lot of people on their birthday. I'm so yeah. bad. I do. If it's their birthday, I'll go and I'll see you our friendship and if they never um, engaged with me or liked anything since Last year, so that's a great strategy. But you brought up something that I think most people have no idea of what you really said. So, how do you find out in Facebook if somebody's ever interacted with you? Smith, you're going to get 6 million results, right? You go to Facebook and put that email address in, 
who bring with that person. So it's a, a whole nother level of you know prospecting, investigating, finding out who that person is, and then hey, maybe we have a mutual friend, maybe we went to college together, maybe we live down the street from each other, we have no idea, you know. So it's huge. See, and this is one of the things that back to your original question is how do you learn this stuff? I really want everybody to understand you've got to get engaged and play with Facebook. One of the things that I'm always amazed at is people are looking for all the answers and yet as you talk to the people that are really doing Facebook marketing, they've poked, pressed, played with everything in Facebook. Go spend a couple hours every week just figuring it out. Go and say, let me praise this. A lot of people ask, is there a good book on Facebook? Every book I've read on Facebook, by the time it gets printed, Facebook has changed. <laughs> so you've got to just get in actively involved in this. That's such a key element. It's not waiting to figure out everything until you know it perfectly. So, you know, go to the classes, go to things like this, but also play with Facebook. Other questions about anything? Yes? First of all, thank you all for coming and caring enough about us to help us grow our business. This is a remedial question in that I have quite a few friends on my Facebook and three times through playing with my Facebook, I've been taken off of Facebook. So my question is, how can I use the personal page to shift them over to the business page so that Facebook doesn't come in and say, sorry, you can't play in the sandbox? Huh? So, what, 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 are you, what are you doing again? <laughs> for example, um, you buy the terms of service of Facebook? From more than like, like, for example, listings come up. Okay. Yeah. I'm a loan officer, okay. and so I see listings. So I go ahead and I post, great, great property, fantastic for a first time home buyer, it's worth the looks here, whatever it is. And then the next day, I go to log on and I'm off. Someone might have reported you. You're not allowed to sell. I didn't think that would sell. That was more of a, hey, take a look. This is great. Also, this doesn't like you. Right? I would say that that, that is an interaction, though. I mean, you're not conversing with anybody. You're, you're all business. And even realtors, I mean, I don't want lenders to go on there and tell me about rates. You know, I, I get those emails and phone calls all day long to begin with. So if you're going to be my lender, why not start off with letting me know who you are and chatting and maybe maybe add something of value to me other than business stuff. That makes sense. So you're basically, I hate to say this, but you're boring people yeah. on Facebook by talking about business. They, they're not there for that. Or just twist it a little bit. Like you can change it into interactive and say, what do you think the payment would be with today's rate on a property of this size? And then you get, you know, you just turn it into a poll and then you get all these you know, questions that you're I would like to say, just for the record, I've never talked about rates. I've actually never really even talked about lending on the site. It's I'm not talking about you. Well, right, right. no, but I'm saying in, in general, when I do try to engage, I've done some of what each of you have said, and in, in, in inadvertently, I've gotten spanked. So I'm trying to figure out do you have how a business page? Do you have a business I do have a business page. So maybe you need to shift that conversation over there? And then maybe you can start running some Facebook ads, here at Realtors, if you want to talk about listings. Otherwise, what Robin said, talk about yourself. The command has like, a cocktail party. You know, yeah. you go around telling everybody you know, what house is up for sale. And oh, yeah. yeah, think of it that way. Maybe one ten if it's appropriate. And, well, and again, put a, a you know your own personal slam on it. My analogy is actually a little different. So I don't think of Facebook as a cocktail party. I think of it more as a backyard party. Because there's family and friends, and you're there for a while. Cocktail party for me is Twitter. You're, you okay. lose, you smooth, you're in and out. Right? You've got 140 to say what you want to say, add a link, a video, whatever, and you're out. So Facebook's a little bit, but no more time. Well, it depends on what time of day, though. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? So yeah. that's yeah. why we're six would be like at 11. Day! <laughs> Another comment for that gentleman too, starting out, you know, one thing you should do is, is when you're done here, go friend all the people on this panel and watch what they Except do. Robin. <laughs> 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 Except Robin. I just watched. Uh, 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 you can like subscribe. But, but one thing that I do, and you know, when you have somebody like Robin, I don't, Robin's the only one I know in this panel that has 5,000 friends. I don't have 5,000 friends. I'll be happy when I get 1,000, but you know, 
somebody like that, don't just spread request, make a personal note in it, yeah. you know, so they know who you are. Take the 10 seconds to give them that much respect. Yeah. But also, what I've done is I look what everybody posts, and I picked up some of the best other sites from that. My, my <laughs> latest one is uh, Hippie Peace Breeds. And, oh, it's fabulous. It really is. If you watch my thing, you see some of the, the things that I post from this Hippie Peace Breeds. It's just these amazing images and what have you. And I'll post it up, and all of a sudden I have 25 people going, this is way cool, and five people share it. And guess what? Again, you're branding, you're proliferating Didlo or Didlo Real Estate Group or whatever it is. That's a big part of Facebook is putting something out there that everybody's going to grab. Or go, if you see a friend with a thousand friends on it, you know, you post something there, you have the ability to have a thousand people see it. You know, your, your hype with Mike, I think, uh, reminded me of what I did uh, started about four years ago. Was, uh, I do a lot of cycling. I, I know about 200 cyclists in South Orange County. But I thought the group that I cycling with the most, I, uh, I sent out a, a hard copy newsletter about cycling. So it was cycling centric, except the last, and this was a four page color thing, and so everyone was interested in reading it. And the last uh, uh, third of a page, was on my real estate, so everyone was reminded that I was a realtor. And every time I went back for a ride, they started talking about real estate. So this whole concept is really, uh, I mean, this could go on exponentially, and, and, and just... Uh, yeah, your business page should be about cycling. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah exactly. And then real estate's like secondary or tertiary yeah. to cycling. People right. like to work with people they like. Exactly, it's the commonality yeah, thing. So <laughs> everyone has something in common with somebody. Right, the perfect example is if I was interviewing real estate agents and three agents came to my house, one is an area specialist, one is number one, so they say, and one is a Buckeye fan. <coughs> I don't care how many houses this Buckeye fan has sold, that's my realtor. Right. You know, like, like, we get each other, and they're not going to bother me during the game. So, <laughs> that, that is who I'm going to go with. But one thing I want to remind you is business to business. I forgot. This is really, really cool, right? Um, so, people that know me know I have three dogs that. I have three dogs. I don't know how that happens. Okay, anyway, so I, I took him to the groomers at OC Happy Sales, and it's like a big deal, you know, I take a picture of them, and they only know it's like a three dogs in the parking car. And they're like, this is a parking spot. And I always tag OC Happy Sales, and I'm like, oh, it's spotted for the babies. Really, I'm like, I'm getting rid of them. And then I go get them, and I'm like, they look so handsome. Well, OC Happy Tales, anytime they think of real estate, they think of me. And I get calls at the most random times of people that need a real estate agent for whatever reason from that company. And that is business to business. They, so whatever business, like so if you have dogs or wherever you frequent, I don't care if it's your driving there or the or bookstore or whatever, <coughs> you get in with them and make sure they have a Facebook page or whatever because they're going to give you business. I mean, I've been offered free food from some place in Ocean Diego because he's on my Facebook page and he's supposed to meet me. I mean, he's like, come on, bring the whole chain, free, whatever. But that is the only way, more free business to business, where I'm actually doing business with them and they're, they're giving me business too. And that's awesome because I'm promoting them for free and now they're promoting me. I mean, that, that brings up a great point. One of the things I think people so often forget is that it's called social media for a reason. <coughs> You've got to be social. And it's the things you're doing. It's the everyday occurrences. It's not just real estate. And so many agents want to just po promote their listings, promote their blog posts, instead of what we've really heard is, how do you engage people? The more engagement you have, the better off you're going to be. Other questions? So, Raj, you brought up you have to have a strategy for business right before you start in social. I want to take it off of social for a minute because social is about building relationships. What are the three things that frustrate you most when dealing with agents on an ongoing basis? Before social. Oh, in business. business. Oh, three. Uh, <laughs> not, well, not, not answering the phone. Especially if you, you want them to respond. I would like I'd like them to answer their phone when I call them, especially if a home was just listed. 
50 grand at the market. And we know exactly what we're doing. So it would be great that's if they hilarious. called us. Um, so that's number one, answering. Um, it would be great if, uh, so any way to contact them, so phone, email, text, whatever it is, that, that's definitely frustrating to me. Two more things that frustrate me about business. Um, lenders, don't, lenders that don't uh, do broker paid appraisals, that makes me nuts. Um, because it takes <coughs> three or four days for them to get the offer, three or four days for them to get disclosures ready, three or four days to get the loan app out, three or four days to order the appraisal. Okay, we got 17 days to get everything done, and they haven't even ordered an appraisal yet, and we're on day 17. So that's a part of the business that makes me nuts, and any LOs out there, please tell your people to broker pay appraisal so you can get that done. Day one, so by day four, you're really just pushing paper and getting disclosures done. Number three, I'm having a little hard time on number three. But those are number those are the Give me number three. Give me number three. <laughs> number three is you can get a million dollar listing up on the MLS with one crappy photo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> or you know, that is a really big uh, you know thing with me is somebody goes, you know, we make pretty good money for you know these listings. And I tell people if any realtor ever shows up with their camera, throw them the hell out. You know? You're not hiring me as a photographer, you're hiring me as an agent. I hire professional photographers to come in and do the best they can because we are in the type of uh, market these days that it's going to get sold online probably. And if you're, it just drives me crazy that these, these people are you know, hiring these agents and they just do this crappy job. Yeah, I can keep going. Uh, <laughs> 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 Not on the MLS. Oh, Open yeah. houses during the week and on weekends. Not on the MLS. And it's an REO. I mean, come on. I mean, REOs need to hit the market 24, 48 hours after that asset is passed over. I mean, that drives me nuts. Jer jerky, ego, not nice. Are you kidding me? We're in this together. Yeah, that's what I'm going to work for. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's appointment only. What are you doing? Okay, I need hey, to. Guilty. <laughs> Here's the reason we do appointment only. Three hours notice the show. Because we want to be there to turn the lights on, turn the music on, light the candles, turn the fireplace on, and have it a happy moment. Yeah. So when those buyers walk in the door, it's not dark and cold. It's like, is this the kitchen? I don't know. Is, this the, the is there yeah, it says so five nice. bedrooms, but it only count four. Where's the fifth? Oh, it's the bonus phone. So yes. we it's know the house better. Call back for the appointment and we can get it that day, but it's like we have a the reason, yeah, the reason is, is because of the other agents. When we do appointment only, it's because we can't trust another agent to sell our house. Because sometimes they walk in, they're like, do you like it? You know, and that's yeah. it. I'd be walking happy and like, hi, and then we're sure we're going to tell them all about the house because yes. we know about the house. Yeah. And we're exactly. not letting them leave without knowing everything about that house, whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so, is it safe to assume that having a business strategy Developing a social strategy and then raising the bar in your business would be the first step before you start going to social media. I, th I think those are three possible. Awesome so, brings up an interesting point, and so we have a way of turning this into a complaining about realtor session. <laughs> <laughs> so, one of the things that is, is always interesting, but every time I leave one of these panels on social media, the focus is on social media, and yet one of the things I found is that it tends to be that the people that seem to be doing the best in social media also do a lot of other marketing. You do a lot of things. You have a business plan. You are thinking about things from a wide variety of perspectives. And social media is just one of the tools in the toolbox. So I'd love to go through the panel and get each of you to sort of share what other marketing activities you're doing, how to build your business in a proactive way, and then how that relates to social media. Oh, I gotta take a breath on that one. Okay, um, so besides social, so we all know the stats, like 85 to 95 the percent of people look for homes online. So um, some people are on Facebook, some people are not on Facebook. So we've got a huge, um, we like SEO, and we run a lot of ads. So whether it's Facebook or Google, we're running a lot of paid ads. So Facebook is not free for me. It actually is one of my biggest cost centers for our team is Facebook. 
in Google. So we run a lot of data, data analytics. But we also, um, everyone on our team has a farm. So whether it's 500 to 5,000 homes, it's really up to the agent themselves. We hit that farm every month with print. Okay? And um, it's up to the agents themselves then to back up that print with ads. So you know you could target ads on Facebook. You could target ads to cities, to zips, to a county. You could target ads to people who are married, engaged, single, who are Christian, who go to church at Saddleback. You can target all these things on Facebook where you know I drop that door knocker off at the house. I don't know if the four-year-old kid took it through in the trash. I don't know if uh, Max, the dog, is chewing on it or peed on it. You have no idea. So what's great about the paid ads is there's an algorithm. There are people are clicking on it. You know if they're clicking on it. Um, there's impressions that you know people see the ad and you know the impressions. Um, so, so do you coordinate your advertising with your mailing? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, well, we do a lot of different types of ads. We do a lot of mailings or drops. <clears throat> And everything has a strategy. So if our Facebook timeline cover looks a certain way for that month, it's going to mimic our print for that month, and it's going to mimic our ads for that month. Does that make sense? Yeah, so there, there's a method to the madness, for sure. So when people click on your ads, where do you typically take them? It depends. So Facebook likes to keep you in Facebook. So if you have an ad, and we've done we probably have 40 ads running right now on Facebook. And the ones that get the most click throughs are the ads that are keeping people on Facebook. So either going to a business page or to a photo set that we have on Facebook. Um, we also push things to YouTube and we do some awesome videos. Um, or we want people to see our Pinterest page. So we can focus on, you know, if we're pinning about a restaurant in South County and they also have a Facebook business page, we can link that together and get people there. They like to eat at R&D Cafe at Fashion Island, and we have, we just ate there ourselves. We took a picture and pinned it, and then wrote a blog post about it. We're engaging people. We're converting people over. And we're All right, Mike. What about you and your marketing? Well, you know what I tell people: if, if we're up to being a part of my business plan, is, is uh, become the digital real estate marketing group. That is my passion, Mark. And I, I much prefer to to uh, take all my creativity and all my ideas and put it out there and just have other people sell and and go do that stuff. I mean, we can all do it all, but let's let's do what we enjoy the most. And, and for me, you know, certainly the Facebook helps a lot of the traditional type of marketing. Uh, I hired this marketing group called Hobbs Herders to, uh, to do a, uh, a personal brochure, which I think is, is very strategic, and I think some other government families have done the same. Uh, I just created a new logo by just putzing around one day that uh, I've had people in the office ask me if I want to sell the damn thing, and people saying I should you know, copyright or trademark it, they like it so much. I go, that's pretty good. So again, a lot of mine is the branding, so if they see it, I, I love the people that go, oh, I saw your listing, I have no listing down there. So the perception is, I have all this stuff going on from the little things that I do. My budget is probably not as expensive as Raj's. One thing that I want to get more into is the online Facebook uh, ads and such. And I'd love to have Raj teach a class on that and how to best utilize that type of stuff. Yeah, can we take a poll of the just of the audience, you guys that are out there on Facebook? How many of you guys click on a Facebook ad? Okay. Oh, yeah. I think the reason we came here is because we want to learn more social media because we're not very uh, user frequently for mm -hmm. that kind of uh, high tech name. Mm -hmm. Call us a uh, you know all, all kind of uh, kids or girl or boy. So we want to learn, of course, we believe this power, powerful of social media, but how can we get our hands on that, get some more knowledge uh, in the beginning? Just like the beginning, uh, one gentleman said, we want to learn how to find a tool. We want to know maybe you can teach us to find a tool as a beginning user. Once we get familiar with that, then we believe that's a very, very powerful social media on Facebook or Twitter, but we are totally new on this. There's so much opportunity here in Orange County to learn how to do it and how to do it right. I think um, you start doing it wrong, 
and people are going to unfriend you, unsubscribe yeah, from you. I love you. We'll know right away. Yeah. 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 The only person who hits a like button on your post, that was a bad post. So since the question came up, I, I'm going to take this opportunity to make an unabashed plug. There's a flyover here. I'm doing a seminar in Las Vegas, December 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Las Vegas. Is that? No, 4th, 5th, and 6th. At the Tropicana, three days on social media marketing, branding, everything else for realtors. There's a flyover here if you're interested in that. The Tropicana just did a remodel. They've got rates for $39 a night, so it's a great deal. And if you want to ask questions about it, see Alex in the back, and he'd be happy to answer some questions for you as well. Hey, Greg. Yes. You know, let me chime in here a little bit here, because uh, I've known Greg and Hopster for quite a while, and I've been to, at a minimum, of four of these three-day things. And I've paid for these things. There's no freebies. Just show up as you like. And I tell you, it is one of the best investments uh, that you can possibly make. Besides just network with a whole bunch of really creative people that are, are passionate about the business. But I sit there and I just take copious notes and, and it just gets me going. I'm like, wow, I could do this, I could do that. And the price point is great. It's, I, I cannot encourage you enough, especially as we're coming into a new year. Uh, I think what we all are probably doing is think about what is our strategy for 2013. You're obviously thinking a little bit more about it because you're sitting here. Should we use social media? How can we use it? How much time should we put into it? How much money should we put into it? Well, and Greg touches all these things. He's a wealth of knowledge. And uh, again, I just would highly encourage it. And, uh, yeah, I second that. It's definitely worth it. We love you, Greg. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Facebook, they want to, they want fun. So you're way better off 
if you're just starting out on Facebook, you're way better off just interacting and making friends with people. Or if you're if you're barely friends with somebody, maybe going a little bit deeper into that, you know, creating a better relationship with that person, getting to know them a little bit more than even you know bringing up your business. So and tell us what the difference that I think sort of the question is really. I'm getting that she doesn't understand the difference between a business page and a personal page. Anybody want to address what that is? Well, one thing that you should immediately do, and this again is part of the marketing concept, is um, you know looking at my personal profile page. What I like to do is I like to change the uh, the timeline image up there because that uh, keeps. You and, and right now I have a picture of a sunrise from my front porch. It's a great photo. It's really nice. But if you go to my business page, I just created something the other day with a thing called Page Moto. You guys use Page Moto at all? It's, write it down, it is so cool. Uh, and you go look at Didlow Real Estate Group, of course you're gonna you know, like it when you see it, right? <laughs> but look at what I did there with the four images and the text and everything, that took three minutes. Three <laughs> minutes, Page Moto. Page Moto, P-A-G-E-M-O-D-O. I'm not pitching it, but you know, we all see a lot of technology. Sometimes I take the time to give it a whirl because I just can't. And this one, I'm like, wow, this is pretty darn cool. And all the images you see up there, most of them, a number of them came from the hippie peace freaks <laughs> or some of the other ones. But you look at it, and I mean, it, it's killer. It's killer. So immediately you get there, and you know I'm did low real estate. And what it is, is actually a, 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 a Bible verse up there. About it. <laughs> no, it was not. <laughs> but I have a picture of five dogs with sheets on them with uh, little buckets in their mouth for Halloween. <laughs> but that would be one first thing immediately that you want to do. And you want to differentiate the two. And, and don't do something stupid like, you know, with your personal page of, putting up a picture of a giraffe and isn't that cute, isn't that neat? What if you did a photo? <laughs> you gotta have your photo. Really, yeah. because yeah. all those people that come up to me and you know, with the take hike with Mike in the supermarket, I mean, if I had a photo of a giraffe, they don't know who I am. And guess yeah. what, that gives me an opportunity to go, oh, by the way, did you happen to know that I'm also in real estate? And oh, by the way, I have take the hike with Mike business cards that have did low real estate on the back. I do not friend with <laughs> no, no, no. You have to have a photo yeah. of you. And don't put it just sold like your long yeah. sign as your time. You yes, you, then you. Please, please don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, question number two. Okay, and on the business okay. profile, you, for contact information, you um, have your phone number and email address. What would you have on your business card? Yeah. Everything. Make sure at least that is up there. Okay. And and remember that this is. This is, a, if you want to do lead generation from this, you've got to be available. It's like, I'm amazed that so many agents want to be a secret agent. I, to me, it's like, put every phone number, like Robin said, everything that people can contact you on, you want people to call you. I mean, I, I just woke up, what if, what if some stranger calls me? Oh, that's called lead generation. <laughs> <laughs> you are in a public business. On the profile page, on that timeline thing, put your phone number there. Don't make them click anywhere to be able to look at that go pull and punch you in right then and there. Okay. And then what do you think about Foursquare? It's different from Facebook, but what do you think about it? Who does Foursquare? I, I have no opinion. Some people use it successfully. It's not really my bag. Not um, but I know some people do not but I, I don't know much about it. So you know what Foursquare is? I will tell you that Foursquare tend to do the best in very dense urban areas. And basically, for those of you who don't know what Foursquare is, it's a social media where you walk into a business and you basically check in to a business. And you get notified of all the people that are in that business. Or an event or some function. <clears throat> and the people that tend to do very well with this live in dense urban areas where it's a small geographic area. LA actually has a very low density of success with Foursquare compared to like New York, San Francisco. It seems to be a, a very urban, if you live in maybe downtown LA or things like that, 
Orange County is so spread out, it, it doesn't seem to have nearly the traction here. But if you are in a very fixed area, it tends to work well. It also seems to be incredibly popular with college kids. Jeremy, give us the... So, Jeremy, give us the key two or three things that you think are key to a business page. Well, posting things that are interesting, you know, the back to the eye candy thing that Raj talked about. I mean, you know, photos or, or things that are going to make people interact with your page or want to see those updates, right? So when you mentioned that the gentleman should, should do a, a when Raj mentioned that the guy should go on a bike page instead of a, a real estate page, more people like bikes than, than houses, you know, looking, looking for houses to buy today probably. So, you know, if, if that's his passion, he's going to be able to go into that page more often and talk about it and have fun with it rather than, you know, like, oh, great, new open house this weekend, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I'll buy it, turn around. Yeah. Not too many houses. I think you should treat your business page more like the personal page. So you should be engaging with people, you should be interacting, you should be running ads to your Facebook page, business page. So I really think you need it. So like, check, check out our page. Check out Robin or Mike's or Jared, any of our pages for great examples of what to do right. I mean, I have everyone on our team like a photo in their bio on our business page. I don't have that on my personal page. I have pictures of all our listings in the photo albums on our business page. I don't have that on my personal page. We've got we've uploaded videos onto our business page, not on my personal page. So how do you get people from your personal page? Yeah, there are a lot of ways to get there, and I don't think we have enough time. But again, um, Facebook allows you to invite your friends to your business page. So that's a great place to start. But again, if you're doing it wrong, you don't want your friends to unfriend you or not like your page or whatever, you know? A good way that you can really do it on a soft sell is just by posting. Say, for example, like I can put all my blog posts up on my business page, but I don't feel like they should all go on my personal one. But sometimes there's one that's decent, so then I'll turn around and share it from my business page to my personal page. And then that way, all the people on my personal page, and I'll see that that's the business page, likely hopefully read it and go on like, the business page. So that's one way that you can kind of easily take them from one to well, This is the number one point. It's called going viral. If you have something interesting to say, 
people will talk about it and see you act. I mean, what's that new song? Women's Bad, really? I mean, come on, right? So, I mean, if you have something interesting to say, or if you have an interesting video, or you've gone there, people will talk about it. Oh, you got to see this. Or, and it will just keep going and going and going. 5,000 people didn't happen like, overnight. It didn't happen by accident. Happened by people saying, you guys are this girl's name. It's funny. You know, it, and it, I like to make people laugh. So they wanted to be on there. Or, oh, she was kind of reading that work. Or whatever. But if you're saying things that are interesting to that person, they're going to go there. And you will get a following. It's like anything. So one of the key things that I really want to stress here is if you listen to what they're saying, being interesting is so critically important. It's that engagement factor. One of the things I love about what Raj does is that his photos of houses, I mean, are so stunning. I mean, it's, it's a quantum leap in what the average agent does. And because they're so visually captivating, they get shared more, they get talked about more. And unfortunately, agents miss the details that, oh my God, he took the time to do a great photo, and they say, oh, look, I can take my iPhone and take a photo here, and it's not going to have the same impact. You're doing the same activity, but it's not going to get the same viral connection because the difference in just the stunning nature of it. So think, how do I make a picture? How do I make a post interesting, compelling, so that people are likely to share it? And it's usually those little details. And the one thing, since I know a lot of these people, they don't tell you about all the stuff they're doing behind the scenes that make this truly the best of what they're doing. This didn't just fall off. So I want you to realize you've got to take some time and effort and think about how to make the stuff you're doing truly powerful that way. I mean, Raj, what, what do you do for your photos? I mean, how do you get them to be so stunning? Well, okay, we've, got some, we've got our own equipment, but I don't take photos, right? So, I mean, I think we've got a ridiculous camera that's sitting right there on the table, but I don't take the videos, right? So I think a lot of it is... Uh, We've got some really talented people on our team that know how to do what they do. But so we take uh, HDR photos, high dynamic range photos. Uh, and anyone familiar with that? Yeah, kind of, sort of. Anyway, uh, so when you take a picture, it actually takes three shots. It takes a, a low, a medium, and a long exposure shot, and it blends all three of these. So a lot of people just take that photo and then put it on the MLS. Well, we, we, we don't really do that. Um, so then it goes through software. Uh, to bring out the photos to life, so to speak. And then we color enhance and digitally edit every single photo. So it takes a long time for us to upload a listing. We usually sign a two-week exclusion from the MLS because we know it takes a, a long time to get anything perfect. And um, we tell our sellers that every single photo has been touched by us. So there's, if a light's out, we put a light in. So like yesterday, we took a shoot, in the beautiful city of Chino with the horses and the flies um, and the light, the electricity was out. So the sellers forgot. And so our photographer drove all the way there. He actually had another shoot in La Quinta. So it came from La Quinta to ours and the lights were out. But it doesn't look like the lights were out because of the way the photos are done and processed and what we'll do to make them look great. So um, a lot of effort. And like with anything in life, people want the fancy camera or the fancy car and they don't know how to try it. Yeah, I could Google how to do uh, an appendectomy or how to take someone's appendix out. <laughs> and I could buy all the equipment to, to figure it out, but good night if I had Jimmy on the <laughs> And I'm going to try to take his appendix out, I forget it. So the key is you partner with the right people. You know what you can and you cannot do. I mean, our business got to a point where I knew that I can't be the stage. And I can't take photos. And I can't do the video. You know, I need help. You know, and, and I got a listing in Huntington Beach. I don't want to drive to Huntington Beach. So you know, you find a great agent like Jeremy who wants to work on Huntington Beach, and then they work it, and you, you figure out a system to make that work. 
Yeah, from Newport Beach to Huntington Beach is just too far. Right? Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so far. Yeah. Well, there, there's, you know, again, Bob's not here, but he's talking about a strategy and a hyper-local strategy. So my hyper-local strategy is in your Belinda. It's not in Huntington Beach. It's not in Newport Beach. It's not in San Clemente. Well, okay. and, and if I need a, some presence in your Belinda, mm. I guess we'll okay. call. Yeah, so, I mean, that's just... I, I friend a lot of people. <laughs> I, so I, I think it's, we have a cooperating broker form. Half of our business is going to be sold to another agent and a broker. You want to know who they are. And, I mean, I've got a deal right now in Anna Mills where I'm actually friends with the agent on Facebook. Before, you know, he listed, the house listed, I look, the first thing I do is I look to see who the agent is. Right? Before I look at the photos or the price or anything, I want to know if I is listing home in San Clemente, the first thing I do is I scroll down, I see my name. I'm done, I'm calling yeah. That's it. Or Robin, now that I know you, and Jeremy, same thing. All right, other questions? Yes? Um, who has heard about Jikes? About what? what? Jikes. Jikes? Jikes. Like Jikes. Oh, Jikes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, is that a, a program? Uh, Tom Ferry. Oh, that's not, about. It's not a program. That's a Tom Ferry uh, flyer. And it's like, yikes, I can't find a buyer for, you know, my, my we didn't get a, uh, oh, yikes, your neighbor just sold and before my buyer could buy it or something like that. So it's just a flyer. You go to Tom Ferry. Like it's a new social It's not. It's, it's, a, it's a term he uses on a flyer to get people. <laughs> there is no new social media. If you're going to be on social media, be on Facebook. Oh, yeah. Exclamation point. Tweet that out. No. Yeah. He's that All right. In the back here. Do you guys ever use LinkedIn to attract more professionals and also, how do you track all these leads you're getting? Do you have a certain software you like to use, whether it's cloud-based or, or on your computer or whatever? So let's separate that. The first question is, do you guys use LinkedIn and how do you use it? Oh, absolutely. Yes. So 